Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? I don't know why I asked that because you guys can't really respond. Anyways, when I got into the business about two years ago, I was looking for a video kind of like this to detail a lot of things to expect and things to know, and it didn't exist. So I decided I was going to go ahead and make one to help you guys out because there's not too many videos out about this. And the ones that are, they don't really talk about like startup costs, brokerage splits and fees and stuff like that. Then also towards the end, stick around. I'm gonna tell you why I left and how I'm still gonna be using my license in the future to make money without actually being an agent. But without no further ado, let's jump into it. So one of the biggest misconceptions I see a lot with people thinking of becoming a real estate agent is they do the quick and dirty math on how much they would make if they sell a house. Let's say it's worth like $400,000, which is pretty average for my area. And if they assume like a 2.5% commission split, that's about like 10K. So they're like, man, if I just sell one house, I'll make 10K. If I sell three houses or four in one year, I'll make as much as I am at my job currently. Well, that's not how it works. Why? Yeah. Let me explain. So many of you might know this, many might not, but when you become a real estate agent, a sales agent, you technically can't sell or help people buy houses unless you're working with a broker. And to become a broker, you're going to need to have two years of work experience, and then you have to take a little bit more courses, and then you have a higher uh, exam that you have to take to get licensed as a broker. So that leaves a lot of the new agents looking for brokers to hang their license under so they can actually do business. And if you guys don't have somebody to work under as a somebody that you might know or something like that or a smaller brokerage that is willing to take you in as a new person what tends to happen is a lot of the new agents go to these big brokerages like coldwell banker lions and uh, keller williams which I actually interviewed at all of these locations but what happens is you're not going to make 100 percent of that commission because those brokerages actually charge you a split of your commission to work underneath them in return most of them have like really good uh training programs and stuff like that that they kind of compensate you with fun fact that's actually how they make a lot of their money is off of the new agents because the statistic goes that 80 to 90 percent of new agents quit within their first or two years that's where the splits come in, into effect and how all that works so basically i interviewed at a few places and it's pretty much standard across the board the split that they usually have is like a 30 70 split for new agents and they have like a coach that can take up to 30% too for like the first few deals. And then on top of that, there's going to be like a company dollar, which a percent of that commission, typically five to 6% goes to the founder of the brokerage. So in reality, you're making like less than half of that commission. But like I said, they make a lot of their money off the new agents because they typically already have a family member or a friend that is willing to work with them. And then after the long term, they kind of fizzle out and leave. But those deals that they brought to the company is what they get the most percentage off of. So with that in mind, I want to let you guys know that Anytime you go to interview at a brokerage to work for, know that you can negotiate the terms of what they offer you. For instance, when I interviewed at one of the locations, they offered me a 30-70 split with a brokerage. And then I found out this later, but the coach that I had would only take 10%. And that's a really good deal because other places were like 25-30%. Later, I realized that coach was pretty new because when she gave me her card, her business card, it still said like real estate consultant on it and not a trainer or coach. So just be mindful you get what you pay for. So my terms was the 30 to 70 split with a brokerage, a 10% commission from the coach for the first five deals. And then I think it was like a 6% split to the founder of the brokerage. And she didn't get it. She didn't get it. I actually talked them down to my first uh, deal that I make with them. There's gonna be no company dollar meaning I get 100% of the commission besides the 10% for my coach. And furthermore, I actually dropped off one of the training coaches commission on the last deal. So she would take a commission off of my first four deals. And since we're talking about interviewing at the brokerages, I highly suggest that you do your homework ahead of time, look very presentable and well-rounded because if you sell yourself really well, that gives you more leeway to negotiate. Also know that they want your business more than you want their business because 
It's not like a traditional job where you're trying to get a job that they're going to pay you. It's reverse because when you close a deal, they get paid. So they're not paying you at all. They're actually going to be making money off you, which I'm going to get to. The biggest one is actually a fun fact. Uh, this is not necessary, but a lot of the brokerages like you doing this and actually require you. And that is to become a member of the National Association of Realtors. And that actually costs a lot of money and you only pay per year and you don't pay monthly. It's like a one year installment and there's no refunds. Luckily, when I got in, I joined later in the month. So my fee was prorated and only paid for like the last few months of the year. And to become a this part of the association in my area was $900, up to $900 a year. And yes, there is perks with it. I mean, you get to call yourself a realtor because that's kind of the fun fact that not everyone's a realtor, even though they do real estate, you have to be part of the association of realtors to call yourself a realtor. There's a li liability involved in that because it's a trademarked word designated only for members. And then moving forward, a lot of the brokerages make you get a better or higher upgraded insurance on your car. So it's te technically a company vehicle that can run you up to like thousand dollars a year just for auto insurance. I even asked my trainer the question of like, Hey, I'm not going to be driving around my clients. I'm not anticipating on that. Do I still have to get it? And they're like, yeah, it's company policy. But when I submitted, submitted my paperwork, I actually left that out. I didn't do it. And I mean, it was still went through and I was, it all worked. So I don't know, maybe that's something to think about. She might've been wrong. I don't know. Moving on more fees. To even be part of the brokerage, you just have to pay a monthly fee and just to use like their printers and offices and stuff like that. This all varies. It could be up to $120 or like $300 a month, depending if you get like an office or not. But also that includes your E&O insurance as well, which is your errors and emissions, just in case you make an error on a uh, contract or you forget to put something in. So that's pretty much it for the fees. So it, you got to pay them monthly. And when you sell a house, you actually have to pay them as well. So with all those fees, you can see that $10,000 figure that you initially thought get diluted more and more. And on top of all that, you still have to pay to get your license before you even get, get involved with all this. And that can cost you up to $700. And if you are still looking to get your real estate license and you haven't already, I'll link up my video up here. It was one of my first videos I made on YouTube on how to get your real estate license quick and different uh, ways of going about that. But that leads me to like ethics and how a lot of realtors have a bad stigma or I should say sales agents because they put so much out of pocket into the business. And the first few years, you have to grind so hard to build up your clientele before you can even close a deal. I mean, it's pretty common for somebody to like close zero to one deals in the first 12 months. And there's a lot of out of pocket costs going involved. And you can start seeing people doing kind of like shady stuff just to make some money and, or just even break even to be honest. And I would say it's pretty hard in the beginning. Uh, you're gonna put a lot of work in with no results. And especially with the mindset of today's age where instant gratification is everything that's going to be like the complete opposite in the beginning. And that's what's wrong with the traditional brokerage um, system, I would say, because in reality, if you're new, they do provide a little bit of help. But in the long term of things, they're just there to cash a check. Back in the day, uh, branding with the brokerage meant a lot because they would do a lot of the marketing and stuff like that. And they would know brokerages by name. But nowadays, there's a statistic where they asked real estate consumers if they went with their agent because of the brokers they're involved. And only 2% of them said yes, because even Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams, which is a pretty big brokerage that started out pretty late too, and climbed up very high back in 2016, he even said that traditional brokerages have to have a drastic change in how they do business within the next five years, or they're going to be obsolete. That brings me to the future of real estate, because I really think that's true. Brokerages right now, a lot of the big ones are operating off of like old tactics and dynamics of way back in the day where everyone had to go to real estate agents to look at listings because they had their MLS um, phone book thing that came out every so often. And when clients are already looking at homes with a agent, they're more inclined to work with them. Well, the internet kind of happened and now there's statistics out there from the National Association of Realtors that say 82, something like that percent of homeowners actually look online for homes before they even contact a realtor. And that's why you see a lot of realtors paying like top dollar for ad space on like Zillow and uh, platforms like that, because a lot of the lead generation is going to come from there. So in my personal opinion, I think a lot of these big brokerages are slowly going to fade away or break down. 
I think the traditional agent is still going to be a thing in the future, but a lot of these online brokerages like eXp Realty and like one of my favorites, Redfin, that just changed the whole dynamics of things are going to be the new future because they offer like super low rates and agents and a whole department that do listings, tours, marketing, all that. And they operate it kind of like a corporation where they pay their realtors bonuses for selling houses. And no matter what, they get paid hourly and have sick leave benefits, stuff like that. And if you look a lot at a lot of the big YouTubers, like one, for instance, me, Kevin, that I've been watching for a while now, he started off as a real estate agent on YouTube and now he moved to just be doing YouTube full time. And if you look at his portfolio, he's actually heavily invested in Redfin as well. And it's been good for me lately too. Uh, since I bought it probably about a year ago, my stocks basically tripled just in that single stock investment. Because if you look at the statistics with like how Amazon evolved to what it is now, how Blockbuster basically got wiped out because of Netflix, I see the same thing happening with the real estate market with it just moving all online, especially what's going on with e-commerce right now and how it's exploding. So that leads me to why I quit and left the business. I was only in it for three or four months and I learned a bunch and I'm still happy that I have my real estate license because I am going to be using it in the future doing like referrals, which I'll get to later. But I basically quit because of two reasons. One is I wanted to get into real estate because I want to, wanted to learn how to invest and how to do paperwork, the ins and outs, because I want to own rental properties in the future. And I also want to like flip houses and stuff like that. As well, I wanted to kind of help my friends and family with real estate on the side part time, but I was going mostly in for the knowledge. And that's kind of where I went wrong. Because as many of you guys might already know or might find out, being an agent or a sales agent, there's a lot of emphasis on sales. You got to be super salesy, which I didn't really vibe with. I would say like 90 to 80% of what you're going to be doing is just trying to find new people and leads. And that's going to be basically a cold calling, just random calling expired listings. They're even going to have you call your old friends from high school and stuff like that. Uh, very salesy. You're going to have to talk to... Uh, like 50 people a week about real estate, you're going to have to keep going. And for me, I wanted to get in for the knowledge base. I found out pretty quick that it's really more of marketing and 10% of it is really actually real estate stuff. And with all the fees associated with it and all the commission splits, me doing it part time, it wouldn't be really worth it. It's only really worth it if you're going to go full on, dedicate your full attention and just go at it full time. So it wasn't a total loss on me uh, getting my license because I am still interested in real estate investing in the future and it's going to come really in handy. And then also having it now, if I wanted to refer somebody to a real estate agent, because like I mentioned earlier, uh, leads is like the biggest thing for real estate agents, they want to find their next deal, their next paycheck. It's very common for real estate agents to give you 20 to 30% of their commission split just to referring a successful client to them. And by California law, people who don't have a real estate license, the most they can make from a referral from a agent is up to $500. And then now since I have my license, I can make a whole lot more. So that's going to come real handy in the future, especially when we be buying my own house. I don't know how I'm going to approach that yet. Maybe I just might refer myself. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to end it there. If you guys like the video, make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And see you on the next one.